Welcome back. In the last lesson, you wrote, wrote a Python program to carry out the bubble sort. In this lesson, we'll convert that into a sort procedure or a sort function. And this will give us the chance to look at the difference between these two ways of sorting. So first of all, we'll convert the bubble sort into a sort procedure and then we'll convert it into a sort function and we'll look at how they work differently to produce a sorted list. We'll also look at how in other programming languages we might pass a parameter by value or by reference and the effect this has on how the sort procedure works. As a reminder, here is the bubble sort program that we wrote last time. If you have not yet written this, it's important that you have it now because we're going to convert it into a procedure. So pause the video and copy this code. So I'm going to set you a challenge, which is to make the bubble sort program into a bubble sort procedure that sorts when we call the procedure it sorts the list so pause the video and have a go at that now as always i will show you the code on the next slide so this is your opportunity so it's pretty easy to do we just put all the code inside a procedure and I haven't made any other changes. I'm passing the list that I want to sort up to the procedure as a parameter. I've called the parameter my list, could be called anything, and I haven't changed any other parts of the code. So I've just indented it and put it inside a procedure. So make sure that you have made a procedure like this Notice it's a procedure, not a function. And now write the main program that calls the procedure. I'll show you that code on the next page. So pause the video, make sure you've written this procedure and then write a short main program that calls the procedure in order to sort a list. So here's the main program, very brief. I've created a list, that list can be anything you like. It could be a list of random numbers, for instance. So my list is ZDAQ. I print it out, then I call the bubble procedure, and then I print my list again. You will see that the list has changed. However, it was a procedure, not a function. I didn't return the list, and yet somehow it has worked to sort my list. What is the explanation for this? You remember that we spoke about passing by value or by reference. If, um, if a parameter is passed by value, the procedure or function gets a copy. If we pass by reference, it can change the original value. In Python, another method is used. Parameters are passed as objects and lists are mutable objects. Unlike integers or strings, lists are mutable objects. That means that the bubble sort procedure is allowed to change the original list. So you're at, it's like passing by reference, running the bubble sort procedure will change the original list. If we don't want to change the original list, we need to create a new list. And in that case, we'd need to use a bubble sort function. So you've just created the bubble sort procedure with a couple of small changes. You can turn that into the bubble sort function. So try doing that. I'll show you the answer on the next slide. So there's a lot of programming in this lesson and really to get the most out of it should be doing these programming tasks as we go. If you've neglected to do that, you can go back and go through this again, following along in your own Python to create these functions. So uh, in a second, I'll show you that.
and it's pretty easy to, ch to turn the bubble sort procedure into a bubble sort function. We simply added one line. We returned the sorted list to the main program. So uh, and adapt the main program so that it captures this return value. I'll show you that in a second or two. So here's the main program. I've had to adapt it slightly because bubble is now a function. It's returning a value. So I've had to capture the returned value and it makes a new list. So I've captured the return value and printed out the new list. I could, instead of creating a new list, I could have overwritten the old value of my list. So it, because I'm using a function, I've got that choice to either make a new list or to overwrite the old list. So turning the bubble sort into a function instead of a procedure gives me a little bit more control over what my program does. So let's just review what we've learned when we're working in Python. It's different in different programming languages, but when we're working in Python, if we write a sort procedure, it will sort the old list. If we write a sort function, it will make a new list, which we can choose to give a new name if we want to. Other programming languages work in different ways. Remember that they give you the option to pass parameters by value or by reference. Some programming languages are limited to one or the other. In any case, if you pass a list by value, that means that the sort routine will get a copy of the list. And if you want to retain the changes, that copy will have to be returned to the main program as you, uh, therefore it will be a sort function. If you pass the list by reference, the sort routine will have access to the original list and therefore you can write a sort procedure. You don't need to return the value because it will be changing the original list. So uh, these, this is just another way of expressing the level of control that I've been describing. Do we create a new list or do we sort the original list? So just to recap, if we pass a parameter by value, the routine gets a copy. If we pass the list by reference, the sort routine can work on the original list. Passing by value, we're returning a new list. Passing by reference, we don't need to return anything because we've made changes to our original list. So it, it depends which, how you do this will really depend on the programming language that you're using. Uh, if your programming language allows you to pass by value, then your sort routine will make a new list. If your programming language requires you to pass by reference, then your programming, then your sort routine will sort the original list. If you're working with Python, we're allowed to do either and we can write either a sort function or, or a sort procedure. So we've got quite a bit of flexibility. And this will vary. These, this is the kind of thing that varies quite a lot between different programming languages. And as you get familiar with different languages, you'll get familiar with the quirks of each one. So to recap, we know how to do sorts, but once we start building procedures or functions, we've got a number of choices to make. Are we going to write a sort procedure? Are we going to write a sort function that makes a new list? Or if we're working with different programming languages, we may have to choose whether to pass our list by value or by reference. So I'll leave you with a task. Write a sort procedure or a sort function 
And if you're my student, I've given you a very long access to a very long list with thousands of items in it, which is called town list. And uh, try sorting that using your procedure or function. So in the next presentation, we'll look a little bit more at how we can write variations of the bubble sort. So more programming to come. Bye for now.